June 11, 2019. It's the first night of the Association of Future Farmers of America, Illinois FFA convention in Springfield, Illinois, and attendees are getting their groove on. During the day, the Young Convention Goers Network attend lectures and receive recognition for their accomplishments in leadership, personal growth, and agricultural education. However, the evening social events are a chance to laugh, flirt, and make new friends. Tonight's party is no exception. A young man is crowd surfing across the cheering, dancing crowd when disaster strikes. He falls and accidentally kicks 16-year-old Riley Horner in the head on the way down, knocking her unconscious. Riley is immediately taken by ambulance to St. John's, a nearby hospital. Authorities notify her parents who live two and a half hours away in Kirkwood, Illinois. Riley's parents rush to the hospital, arriving in the wee hours of the morning. When they see Riley, her knee is injured and she isn't acting like her normal self. Riley's mother Sarah demands a CT scan. It comes back normal. Despite the Horner's protests that something is wrong, the ER doctors announce that Riley is fine and release her to the care of her parents. The Horners load Riley in their car and begin the long journey home, but Riley is not fine. The family is about an hour into their trip when Riley, who's sitting in the back seat, starts shaking. She's having a seizure. By the time the family makes it home, Riley's had at least four more seizures. She's readmitted to a different hospital. However, all tests for major medical conditions come back negative. Over the next few days, Riley has seizure after seizure, over 35 in total. Her parents notice other odd symptoms. Every two hours, Riley seems especially confused and doesn't remember conversations or events that just happened. In fact, every morning, Riley wakes up thinking that it's June 11th, the day she was kicked in the head. The summer wears on. In addition to memory issues, Riley has dizzy spells, migraines, sensitivity to light, and sometimes slurs her words. The Horners take Riley to doctor after doctor. However, the medical professionals are stumped and can offer no diagnosis. Clearly, Riley had a concussion, but she doesn't have a brain bleed or a tumor, and nothing unusual shows up on her MRI or CT scans. Riley's forced to develop a system of detailed note and picture taking to use as a cheat sheet to minimize confusion and help her navigate her daily life. She sets alarms on her phone for every two hours so she can brush up on the events she's forgotten. Frustrated by the lack of help from medical professionals, Sarah researches and educates herself about brain injuries. Terrifyingly, she learns that after six months of experiencing short-term memory issues, a patient may have suffered irreversible brain damage. She becomes even more determined to find medical help for her daughter. Riley begins her junior year of school and has a difficult time. She once excelled at sports and in her studies, and now she has trouble focusing and can't remember where her locker is. About three months after the accident, Riley gets a really bad headache and then becomes unresponsive. Even though she's breathing and her heart's beating, she can't be roused for nearly 45 minutes. When Riley finally wakes up, she has tremors in her left arm and leg, and she can't walk. She ends up in the ER again, but the doctors can't determine what's wrong. They give her crutches and send her home. Sarah reaches out on the internet to bring awareness to Riley's condition and to raise money to help alleviate the cost of her daughter's many tests and doctor visits. Riley's story is picked up by various news media. Strangers online alert the Horners to Cognitive FX in Provo, Utah. Cognitive FX specializes in treatment of concussions through physical and cognitive therapy using cutting-edge neuroscience. In November, Riley's able to spend two weeks at Cognitive FX undergoing diagnosis and treatment. It's discovered that four months after the accident, Riley still has a pretty severe concussion. On a scale of 0 to 5, 5 being the worst, Riley has a 2.5 at the beginning of her treatment. Doctors suspect that when Riley got concussed, it also stopped blood to her hippocampus. The hippocampus is the area in the brain where memories are created. The lack of blood to the hippocampus set off a chain reaction, and since then, certain areas in Riley's brain receive too much blood flow, while other areas don't receive enough. Basically, in the words of Sarah, making Riley glitchy. Thankfully, Riley's hippocampus doesn't seem to be damaged. The hope is that time and therapy would rewire the pathways in her brain. Within a few days of beginning treatment, the hoarders see improvement. When Riley wakes up, she remembers where she is. After two weeks of treatment, Riley improves her concussion score dramatically from a 2.5 to a 0.13. Since then, Riley's experienced ups and downs. In March, Riley had a seizure at school and briefly stayed in the hospital. Soon after, COVID-19 caused school closure. Quarantine ended up being a blessing in disguise for Riley. She was able to spend more time simply recovering without having to adhere to a strict schedule. The concussion damaged Riley's eyes and she had to see a specialist. However, new glasses have helped immensely. The concussion also caused digestive problems. For several months after the accident, Riley couldn't eat or digest food without severe pain. As a result, she lost weight, surviving on granola bars and water. 
Eventually, doctors came to suspect that oxygen wasn't circulating correctly through Riley's diaphragm. Doing breathing exercises she'd learned at Cognitive FX prior to eating helped to lessen the pain. In the ensuing months, Riley's digestive system has slowly settled down. Currently in her senior year of high school, Riley continues to experience memory problems, migraines, and other issues related to post-concussion syndrome. She's doing well in school and dreams of studying neuroscience and helping others, but periodically she has online follow-up exams with medical professionals from Cognitive FX. She hopes to return to the treatment center for another round of therapy once it's safe to do so. Unfortunately, nearly all the treatment Riley has undergone is considered experimental, which means no help from insurance. Riley has come a long way since the accident, but the road ahead presents many challenges. If you would like to help Riley, please visit her GoFundMe. A link is available below in the description. You can learn more about Riley on her Facebook page, facebook.com slash helpreillyremember. Thank you.